Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. And welcome to this VidMob and Pinterest co-hosted webinar that we're calling Six Shades of Smart. Today, we're going to talk you through creative insights that you can action on right away to see better results from your next campaign on Pinterest. So the agenda for today and today's webinar is as follows. We will kick off with quick introductions, and then we'll speak a little bit about beauty amidst COVID-19. Pinterest will share some insight into beauty consumption on their platform, and then we'll share a little bit about VidMob's capabilities. We will uh, present a case study and some creative insights that can help bring you some creative inspiration on how to optimize your content on Pinterest going forward. So to kick things off, my name is Christiane Ball. I lead our beauty, luxury, and retail team at VidMob. I'm currently based in London after having spent the past five years in New York. So on my board, uh, you will get a glimpse into my interests and my inspirations. I just moved into a new apartment, so I love looking at modern decor on Pinterest. I am an avid traveler, so currently I'm daydreaming a lot about Santorini, Tulum, what outfits I can be wearing to festivals when those open up again. And of course, I love getting inspiration into new beauty trends and looking at tutorials on how to get that perfect smoky eye or winged eyeliner. Very excited to be here and presenting to you today. And with me, I have the amazing Rachel. Hi, everyone. I'm Rachel Goodman, and I lead beauty partnerships at Pinterest. We always say that Pinterest is a window into your soul, and mine has been quite exposed recently with the influx of at-home inspiration ideas to keep my toddler entertained and my family fed. Beauty is my escape and fuels my sense of self and I'm currently using Pinterest to learn how to do my own manicures. And I'm surprised that I'm actually not that bad at it. So we all know that COVID has impacted us all and our day-to-day -day lives are completely different than they were just a couple months ago. We're forced to rethink how we operate at home some of us are battling loneliness and depression. Others have their hands quite full between taking care of children and working full-time jobs. We have economic uncertainties now more than ever. The Pinterest mission though has not changed. For 10 years, we've been about bringing people inspiration to create a life that they love. And now more than ever, people need that inspiration. Pinterest has hit an all-time high in engagement with searches up 60% year over year and new signups increasing by 30%. New board creation, one of the highest intent driven behaviors on Pinterest is up 45%, showing that people are coming to Pinterest to find new ideas and figure out their new normal. Within the beauty category, we're finding that pinners are looking to self-care to fuel that sense of self during this uncertain time. So they're creating a spa-like environment at home and figuring out what to do with their manicures, with their hair, and both are increasing at over 100% week over week just in searches alone. Skincare is rapidly increasing as pinners look for new products to enhance their routines with skincare products up 54%. And this is all fueling self-improvement, something that pinners want to work on during quarantine with the glow up checklist up 291%. Beauty also sparks joy and offers an escape and pinners want to bring color into their makeup and try new techniques. Colorful eye makeup tutorials are up 93%. So inspiration is really needed now and beauty brands are in a position to help consumers and inspire them. You as a beauty brand have an opportunity to capitalize on these insights that I just mentioned and aligned your messaging to increase your relevancy. Pinners want ideas and they need brands to execute those ideas. How you react today and communicate today really does matter. As Rachel just mentioned, being there for pinners during this moment is crucial. People need to hear from brands and their perceptions and trust is guided by how you're responding right now. A counter study after the 2008 financial crisis showed that brands who went dark paid a steep price. 
those who continued to advertise and tell stories and offer empathy and support, they recovered nine times as fast as those who didn't. So Cantor has a COVID-19 barometer and they found that only 8% of consumers say brands should advertise less during COVID-19. But understandably, brands are concerned about how to strike the right balance. During a crisis, when lives are being lost in the tens of thousands, jobs are being lost in the millions, it is hard to know what to say to avoid seeming opportunistic or tone deaf. Pinterest issued a quote in a recent interview, and we could not agree more with the choice of words to describe what brands should aim for. Authenticity, compassion, and helpfulness. This is the best checklist, and it should be pinned on every marketer's wall. The tricky part is knowing how to do this. In this presentation, we'll share a solution that you can use to measure if the visuals and the words in your ads are resonating with your audiences. And if they aren't, we'll show you how you can react to it quickly. So before we go into creative guidance, we'd like to anchor you all in the beauty use case on Pinterest. Beauty is one of the top reasons that she comes to Pinterest. It's our fourth largest category. And out of our 335 million global monthly active users, 52 million in the US are engaging with beauty content every month. We have strong reach against core beauty audiences, reaching seven in 10 women 25 to 54 in the US and three in four women 18 to 34. Pinterest is all about discovery, and it's important to understand how people discover on Pinterest before you start building your creative. So within the home feed, you'll see ideas personalized to you based on your interest and the type of content you've been interacting with lately. Some of this will come from sources you follow on Pinterest, but mostly it's automatically curated from the billions of pins on the platform personalized for you. So this is what you see automatically when you enter Pinterest. Then you have the option to search. And when you search with text, you'll get relevant ideas based on both your query and based on your personal tastes. Within beauty, you can even use filters to choose the skin tone of your choice that you wish to see in your results. Now, of course, everyone is familiar with how to use a search bar. But what's quite unique on Pinterest is that while you search with text, you get visual responses, literally turning your words into images that inspire. And as you find things that you like, beneath it you'll see related pins. And this shows you similar ideas to what you just took a closer look at. In this example, if you're looking for a red lip makeup look, you can scroll through different images until you find the exact one that suits your taste. As a visual search platform, pinners search all major beauty categories in different ways than they do on other search platforms. They're looking for new ideas, which tend to be more upper funnel with 91% of searches being non-brand keywords. These are all examples of top searches within each major beauty category. So first within the hair category, pinners are really looking for new hairstyle inspiration, new hair color inspiration with each seasonal change and new trends and ways to care for their hair as well. Within makeup, it's about looks and tutorials, how to get that look. And nails is the latest color trends in mastering nail art. Within skincare, it's very solutions-based, finding a personalized regimen and products for you based on your concerns. Ultimately, they're here to be inspired and find new beauty ideas and products. What's even more is that because they're looking at the beginning of their purchase journey, they are more likely to try a new product or a new brand. 59% of weekly pinners say that they're inspired on Pinterest to try something new in the beauty category. You can see by the boards that they create that they have intent. They're actively considering what to do or buy next. 86% of beauty pinners have made a purchase based on content they've seen from a beauty brand. This is the holy grail of mindsets, seeking inspiration and full of intent. 
For beauty brands, Pinterest is a great driver of new customers. So now that you understand the pinner mindset and what they're looking for from beauty brands, we'll transition to the creative conversation. Before turning it over to Chris, I'll leave you with the top beauty content pillars we find do best on Pinterest. The first is inspiration. This can be around new looks, new moments, new trends, using really beautiful imagery. The second is education and tutorials to help pinners get the look. We find video does really well here too. And the third is product discovery, where you can show product range, color, product benefits, and drive to shop these products. Video consumption has increased drastically on the platform as well, and it's a really great canvas to tell your story. Most of Pinterest content comes from brands and businesses like yourselves, and making branded content truly, truly native to the platform. This means that you are not interrupting the experience of a pinner, you're adding to it. And as a brand, you can truly inspire. So now that you know how to create pins and really drive business results, how, how do we do that? And I'm so excited to turn it over to Chris to walk you through how Vidmob can help. Vidmob is one of our trusted creative partners that can not only help your brand create amazing pins rooted in best practices and insights, but also help you understand what performs best for your brand to drive business success. All right, Chris, take it away. Thank you, Rachel. We all know that creative impacts performance, but it's not until recently that marketers have started to fully understand just how important it is. A recent stat shows that 70% of performance is driven by creative. So you can have the best media plan, targeting strategy, and measurement. However, if your creative isn't optimized based on the goals you're looking to achieve, your campaign will ultimately not perform as well as it could. When you're creating content for your Pinterest ads, there are a range of choices you can make. How should people use my product? How do I show my product? Where and when do I introduce branding? What colors do I focus on? Previously, there were no easy ways of testing creative choices at scale. We have A-B testing, it's one way, but it's often slow and expensive, and copy testing doesn't consider the context. This is where Vidmob comes in. Vidmob's AI capability through our Agile Creative Studio allows brands to classify and quantify the impact of every creative decision in an ad, including the key visuals, the background, the messaging, color choices, the language that we use in voiceover and text and messaging overlays, logo introduction, its placement and persistence, people, including celebrities, and their sentiments. The Agile Creative Studio intersects these creative choices with performance data imported in near real time from the Pinterest API to identify the creative choices that yield better performance. Putting this together, Vidmob's platform makes scalable and data-informed digital creative possible. We're going to break this down a little bit further. A lot of what we do is developing video content. A video is a series of creative data that can be measured, and it enables us to understand the science behind the art. In every millisecond of an ad, there are creative elements that we can identify. Vidmob deconstructs videos into creative components, so creative data becomes actionable insights. We work with brands to understand exactly what the unique actionable insights are for them that will help drive their performance up, no matter the KPI. And one of these brands that we've been working with is Ulta. We'll now take a look at how Ulta impacted their performance in a campaign using creative data. Also partnered with Vidmob to create a range of social ads for their Fall 19 campaign, five of which were specifically for Pinterest. Before we started production of the optimized assets, we did a full historical analysis reviewing all of the creative in the Pinterest ad account, looking back at a full year of data. The insights that we found and that we applied when creating new optimized pin assets were videos showing a model flipping her hair led to a 19% increase in 50% user rate, including branding in the top portion of the video led to 14% higher views through rates than the account average. For tutorial campaigns, creative with get the look messaging outperformed how-tos by 20.4%. 
and opening with a woman smiling led to a 20% higher view through rate than the account average. In total, we optimized five assets for Alta using these insights, three of which you will see playing um, on the screen now. And the results from optimizing these, we saw a 82% increase in performance in view through to 50% compared to the account average. This example from Alta is a great case of how you can use your brand's own insights to develop better creatives and start to understand what your own best practices can look like. This is just one example of how you can use your own insights to optimize content. For instance, in another example, we saw how small changes in text speed and density made a significant difference in CTR performance. We have a range of examples such as these and happy to follow up with anyone interested to dive further in. And in the next and final section, um, I'm gonna walk you through some creative considerations that you can implement and test for your next beauty campaign. One thing that's important to note is that these are not best practices, but rather considerations for testing. What works for one brand can look very different for another brand, despite being in the same industry. We therefore present these considerations based on the trends that we're seeing across beauty brands, and that we want them to serve as inspiration for further testing and learning. Ongoing creative analysis is the best practice. We used our Agile Creative Studio at scale to identify the creative decisions that work well for beauty on Pinterest. We looked at several KPIs in the Pinterest API, view through rate, so people viewed through the full extent of a video pin, close up rate, people viewed a close up version of your pin, and save rate, people saved the pin to their board. The first insight that I'm talking you through is product proof. One of the most foundational questions a marketer asks when developing an asset is, how do I represent my product? For beauty ads on Pinterest, an effective way is to showcase a model using the product. Sally Hansen saw great results when featuring a model's hand. Through our analysis, we found that Using a model's hand increased view through rate for a Sally Hansen campaign by 120% and increased save rate across our sample group by 43%. The second creative uh, consideration is using instructional, tutorial, and step by step messaging identified through tags like step, brush, twist. And we saw that that increased both save and close up rates. Third, is logo placement. Showcasing the brand being advertised in a form of a logo is critical to capturing engagement. Our analysis showed a 13 times higher save rate when brands included branding versus no branding in the ad. Our data also showed that logo placement taking up a smaller space in the screen and placed in the corners of the frame drove a significant increase in save rate compared to a centered logo placement taking up more of the screen. Each brand should test this to understand what works for them, but having your logo present is important in driving your KPIs. So to jump in here on the Pinterest side, we like to call this subtle branding. And we have found over the years that different things work for different brands. So to that point about really testing and learning, we highly suggest that. So for example, if you have a very recognizable brand on your actual product and it's clear in the image, that might be enough. You may not need to include an additional logo. Branding, remember, is really helpful for pinners as they can recognize who makes the product and where they could potentially buy it. The fourth creative consideration is ad duration. So the ideal length of an ad is highly dependent on the content that you're showing. Shorter ads may grab a viewer's attention, but viewers are also likely to watch the tutorials until completion. We're seeing an increase in click-through rates for shorter and an increase in close-up rates for longer videos. Again, each brand needs to test and learn what works for them based on what their specific objectives are for their campaign. And what I loved so much about this is that you can buy video based on your KPI. So if your goal is more performance-based, to Chris's point, 
stick with shorter, quicker videos that really feature your product and drive to e-commerce and buy them on a cost per click. Longer form videos do well here, especially tutorials, and are great for more engagement focused campaigns that you can buy on a CPM or a CPB. The fifth uh, consideration is seasonality. Seasonal creative can drive your click through rates and can drive your save rates on Pinterest by featuring creative elements in your content. Popular spring elements include flowers, wood, and nature. And popular summer tags typically include SPF, bikini, vacation, pool. These may look different this year as consumers are encouraged to stay at home. So again, this year definitely goes back to testing and learning what works for your brand when you're playing with seasonality because it will most likely look different, especially for the summer season this year compared to what it did uh, previous seasons. And I think that's an area where Pinterest can help in terms of identifying the insights and consumer behaviors that are happening right now. Pinterest tends to be a very moments-based platform and people are still planning for seasonal moments like Mother's Day coming up. It just looks a little different this time around um, than it may have historically. So definitely lean on your Pinterest team for those insights to impact your seasonal creative. And then this uh, last point that I want to highlight from our analysis is around pacing. Our data showed trends that sequentially higher scene changes yielded greater view through and click rates with four scenes resulting in more pronounced jump in views through to 25%. It's interesting to note that this is not a linear trend and I don't want you all to leave here and change all your ads to having four scenes in the first three seconds. But it is an interesting insight for testing to understand whether you should have more scene swaps and what the sweet spot is for your brand. And it's important with this to remember that Pinterest is a two grid system on your mobile device, which is where most of our consumption is. So in order to stand out in feed, something like quick animation will really help you get that close up on your pin. So what Chris just described will allow your videos to be what we like to call thumb stopping and really stand out in the feed. So I know that was a lot in a short amount of time. And as you saw, there are many creative elements and variables that you can tweak to build better performing content on Pinterest that will work for you in achieving your main KPIs. One thing that's important to take away is that you as a brand need to create your own best practices. What worked last year might look very different today given the current circumstances. VidMob can be of help in understanding what works for each of your brands individually and how you can build beautiful and effective creative for your next Pinterest campaign. We have a great partnership in place with incentives for brands to quickly get started today. So please, re please reach out to us, Rachel and myself, um, to hear more about this if it's of interest to you. Also, we wanna thank you all for uh, sharing questions ahead of uh, this webinar. We hope we covered them all. If not, please feel free to email us. Thank you all so much for your time today. We wish you all a great rest of your day and week. Stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you. Thanks so much, everyone.